these two maps show something quite remarkable, and frankly, a little confusing. The map on the left might soon be completely filled. It shows the number of states that have lifted same-sex marriage bans. The map on the right is where things get tricky. The fact is, in most states, it's still currently legal to fire LGBT people, kick them out of a store or business that serves the public, or even evict them from housing because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. America is either at the beginning of a brave new era or finds itself at the beginning of a discourse that threatens to rip the nation to pieces. Gay marriage is now the law of the land in America, evoking similarities by many to the civil rights movement of the 1960s, while others call any such comparison meaningless and without merit, which brings us to the issue of housing and employment. First up, she's the founder of JaneUnchained.com, award-winning broadcaster, best-selling author. We welcome back Jane Velez Mitchell, and joined by the founder of PhillyGayLawyer.com, LGBT attorney Angela Giampolo. Ladies, I thank you so much for joining us. And Angela, I'm going to go ahead and begin with you. We have a statement here. The problem is if gay marriage comes and gay couples go to get married, a number of them will get fired from their jobs for that. Do you agree with that? I mean, it's been happening. Right. It's been happening in my world as a lawyer for for 50, 100 years. So, yeah, it's real that if you get married on Friday and put in for your gay honeymoon on Monday here in Pennsylvania and in many states, you can unilaterally be fired and they don't have to hide it. They can say, Angela, you're a lesbian. Go home. And it usually doesn't happen that openly. They still find other ways to do it, even though they don't have to. What kind of other ways? Uh, you know, just your typical, the same way that African Americans are fired or women are fired, just that, you know, the, the indiscreet sort of ways. But, but as an attorney who specializes in employment discrimination, it's really sad, I guess, that every time my phone rings and someone says, I think I was fired, I think I was fired for being gay. And my first question has to be, what county do you live in? Because in Pennsylvania, many municipalities have actually, like Philadelphia, have, have passed laws. More In Pennsylvania, we don't have any statewide and we have none federally, but Philadelphia has gone above and beyond. So out of 67 some odd municipalities in Pennsylvania, 40 of them have nothing. So when someone calls me before they even get started, I have to ask them, where do you live? And based on that, I can either help them or I can't. And as a lawyer, that just shouldn't be the law of the land. Jane, let's look at one side of this, because already I have read a number of columns today. I'm sure you have as well. Angela, I know you have. But Jane, there are those who say that the fight for same-sex marriage is not a civil right. You would reply how? I would say do not use the phrase religious liberty as a band-aid for bigotry. And those who do, I would suggest listen to the words of Jesus Christ, who said, and I quote, a new command. I give you love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Or my personal favorite, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone. In other words, given this ruling, which said that gay marriage is the law of the land, okay, we can react with love or we can react with hate. I would suggest those who disagree with the decision to try to react with love and not try to retaliate by discriminating against gays in housing or employment. You know, America is not a place where we tolerate people saying, I won't serve you because I don't like your kind. That was the basis of the civil rights movement. That is why some brave young college students sat on lunch counters in North Carolina in a Woolworth in 1960 because they didn't like the idea that people said to them, I won't serve you because I don't like your kind. That's not how America operates, Ed. It doesn't operate that way based on race, and it shouldn't operate that way based on sexual orientation. What about religion, though? Jane, because there are those people claiming that this is a religious issue here. I'm sure you've heard it as well. Let's go to the Texas Attorney General who says that county clerks can refuse gay couples. And even he says that we will then back you up legally. So there are those who are saying that you may have your rights, but we need our religious rights as well to say no. Well, this is why we need stronger federal protections. Just like the whole marriage issue was a crazy a patchwork quilt until the Supreme Court ruled this past week. So we need the same kind of protections for LGBT on the level of housing and on the level of employment. We need to make this a federal issue. Yes, 
People who uh, are opponents of gay rights have the First Amendment right to speak that out, and I applaud their First Amendment rights, but there's also the 14th Amendment, which was created after the Civil War to protect former slaves from hideous discrimination that says equal protection under the law and there should be equal protection for people no matter what their sexual orientation or gender identity. Angela, let me at least try to get to some sort of an idea here on how we, we try to solve this. In your opinion, if there are people who have religious objections, who strongly believe in their faith, and we can't question it, if that's what they want to believe in, that's what we need to let them believe in here. Right. How then do you work with them? These people feel as if you're contradicting my beliefs in here. How then does the LGBT community try to get through this and at least try to create some semblance of working together? Can they? Well, and so it's interesting because between Jane and I, she's now quoted the Bible twice. I don't think I've quoted the Bible my entire life until this past week, but one of my favorite Bible quotes that, that I'm now reciting while I'm discussing this issue is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Of these three things, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. Not faith, not hope. Of these three things, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. And the LGBT hashtag around this entire fight has been hashtag love wins but we've been talking about that for a long time angela you are correct but there are people who have been quoting those for a long time and the people who are very steadfast in their beliefs say that is not the point here the point is morality the point is the fact that man cannot lay with a man woman cannot lay with a woman and you so know i guess we're I into all that as well reality, i shouldn't eat shellfish and i've had shrimp and crabs today alone so i'm going to hell on top of being a lesbian so i mean all i'm saying is jane and i have decided to both now, three, three times between the two of us, quote, positive Bible verses that, that help this issue. And why are she and I being positive around this issue, and yet the other side chooses to be negative? How can we work together? All we're asking to do, so the Archbishop of Philadelphia said, the erroneous Supreme Court decision undermines the love between a man and a woman. And... Absolutely not. What this decision did was multiply the amount of love that can exist. So if what you're looking to do is have love in the world, allowing gay people to get married only multiplies love. If you have an issue around morality in general, you should be looking at banning divorce. Because Donald Trump has had three traditional marriages that have been worth a whole hell of a lot. Okay, you're right. Let me get here. I only got a minute left here. So, Jane, I want to come to you then with some sort of a... I want to come to you, Jane, with some sort of a, a, a way here to solve this now. We're talking employment and housing discrimination then. How then do you think, and I only got 35 seconds left now, this needs to be fought to make it work? Well, I think we really need to expand the Civil Rights Act to include... Uh, sexual orientation and gender identity. This has been a constantly evolving work where we start realizing more and more people deserve equal protection under the law. Ultimately, we all deserve equal protection under the law. Separate but equal equals unequal, okay? That equals monopoly money. We all want to be first-class citizens in this world. Gay people and transgender are taxpayers. We have a right to equal protection under the law. And I would say to those who disagree with it, you can protest all you want, but discrimination is discrimination. Don't masquerade as religious liberty when it's really bigotry. It makes you uncomfortable. Look in the mirror and ask yourself why it makes you uncomfortable. Sometimes the answers you're going to get may inspire more questions. Okay, we're all out of time right there. Jane Velez Mitchell, Angela Giampolo, I thank you both ladies for being here because we are going to continue this discussion. Coming up next, the issue of cruel and unusual punishment that has nothing to do with being forced to watch a Real Housewives marathon.